So good morning, here we go for stage three of the tour. Painting every stage every day. So the way I start this work is I've been watching the race for a while today. Looking for a strong image, tells us a bit about the race. Something interesting to paint, you know. Ultimately, whenever you do a piece of artwork, you need to remind yourself that whatever your source material is, the viewer, the owner, whatever, will never see what you paint it from. <laughs> Even to that end, I'm not showing you the image I'm using, I'm just showing you the results. So this is the early morning breakaway. The tour has finally gotten onto the roads of France after having done two full stages and a bit of the early part of the day in Belgium. So now the Tour de France is actually on home roads. So this break actually holds this guy I'm drawing right now, Tim Wellens, is the highest place. So technically he is the uh, yellow jersey on the road, meaning his current time ahead of the peloton in the yellow jersey makes him the virtual jersey. That, of course, will not stand. They still have 140 kilometers to race today, and you can guarantee the team of Jumbo Visma and all the other teams that are interested in the uh, overall will show up <laughs> and chase these guys down as we get closer to the end of the stage. It's also going to be a hilly end of the stage, too, so that always enlivens the race. So it's five guys leading. This one back here in the back is taking the shorter way around the roundabout, hopping up over the cobblestone verge. Fortunately, he is going to miss the uh, section of grass, I hope. Who knows, maybe he could blow it at the end here. Because I do paint these things in such a way that I don't know, it may be slightly behind real time, but I don't know what's going to happen in the stage. I like to paint these as close to real time live as possible, and certainly without any foreknowledge. So, I don't know, maybe these guys do win the stage today. And maybe this Tim Wellens or um, Orselin here is going to be the new yellow jersey. So, that's always a little difficult when, like yesterday, painting the a time trial because that is just, you have no way of knowing who's going to win the stage and it could be the very first guy, like yesterday, the very first team to go almost won the day. And had I not chosen to paint them, had it not been that particular team, Ineos, who had a high probability of winning. So we're going to call this leading into Paris, I mean into France. Since we're on French roads now. So now I've done the black and white part, the ink. And I am using these uh, pins from Faber-Castell because if I actually use ink, the stuff won't dry in time. Um, then I'll be sitting here waiting for the ink to dry or getting into the image too soon and having a, some color problems and issues with what, you know, what am I trying to say? Getting the color dirtied by the ink and you just have a big old splotchy, muddy mess, and I'd rather not do that. So as I've said before, starting with the warm, pale colors, so to, again to avoid muddy messes, plus for me, painting the skin tone of the figures helps me <laughs> figure out which figure is where. You know, a little shadow here, so a little darker, a little more orange flesh tone. And then, had I any orange in this image, I would move to that next, but instead I'm going to shift to the red. 
and the fans along the side of the road. And then this is uh, Energy One, the Continental Team. A little bit of flecks of red on their kit. And the only rider in this group who's on a Pro Tour team, the higher level of riders of teams. There are 24 Pro Tour teams. The rest are on what we call Continental teams. And this gentleman right here, Stefan Risotto, is wearing red numbers to designate that he was a, um, I think they actually use most courageous rider from the first stage of this year's tour riding for Colfidis. So now we've done the warms that I want. I think I'll go to the greens of the grasses first. So the green of the traffic circle. These traffic circles are difficult for the cyclist making them do things like this gentleman jumping, trying to take the shortest way across. Yesterday in the final two kilometers of the time trial, there was a traffic circle that really made it very difficult to manage the uh, time trial bikes. So they went around the corners. Fortunately, at least on camera, I saw no one crash. I think I did hear that someone, one team did have a rider go down. So just playing around with some various green tones. You know, you don't, as you well know, if you go out there and mow your lawn, grass is not all one color. Of course, in my case, it's weeds are not all one color. problem with uh, painting the tour in July. I frequently end up with a very messy line. Phil Liggett was talking about earlier about, yeah, he's in France for four weeks with the pre and post tours and stuff. So his lawn gets pretty disastrous. He was joking. Phil Liggett being one of the announcers on the tour who's been doing it for over 30 years. So again, just laying in the trees here in the background, using the darker green. So again, still sticking with that idea, I've used the dark green first, I mean the light green first, and then laying the darker color into it. And now we'll switch to the blues. So the direct energy is a dominantly blue kit with that little spot of red. And always when you're painting, you want to have your marks help inform the shape of what it is you're painting. So yeah, I'm doing these swooping curls as I go around the rider's rear end, the shape of the helmet. So even in the grass, actually I'm seeing something I forgot to do. I forgot the highlights in my trees. So I'm going to switch color, get that off of my brush, come back and get a brighter green. So I'm picking up this sort of olive drab, but I want to add just a little bit of yellow, or yellowy green, and there we come back in, and it's, in a, it's subtle, but now you have a little more dimension to the trees that are here in the distance. Now, 
clean the brush again and go back to the blue for this beautiful blue sky that the riders are blessed with today. And because that was a wet, wet mix, I picked up a little bit of the um, sky or the trees into the sky, but that doesn't really bother me. So but that's something you also need to think about trying to control. I'll show her she there. A little detail there I missed. Adding that back in. Now what I'm gonna do is switch and get the darks. Oh, I see a little blue I want to do again. This bicycle. I come in here and build a black, which I do with the vermilion and the dark green. Dark blue green. See so now I have this lovely black. I come in here and hit the shorts. And the wheels of the bikes. Hair of the cyclist. Hair of the spectators. and then dilute that a little bit to get this roadway surface. Dilute it a little more. In that case I just picked up some water after it was already on my brush. And you can see just a little bit of the purplish coming through in that. And then for the cobbles I'm going to add a little bit of this yellowy orange. So my dirty brush. Get this nice tone here. I'm going to lay in a base with that. Again, following the direction of the road, the direction of what I'm painting. And then pick up some more dark. Just give some flex to give a hint of the cobbles. Always look forward to painting Perry Roubaix and trying to big part of the Perry roubaix race and what makes it so difficult and famous is it's cobbled, terribly rough cobbled roads, so. Add a little more color to this building in the background here. And then that big white square is a sign. Let's give it just a touch of color. And there you are, today's painting. So I didn't give you the, so you can find all this work on my blog at theartofcycling.blogspot.com and check out my website at gregleach.com, G-R-E-I-G-L-E-A-C-H.com. Please give me a like, subscribe if you like what you see. And check back tomorrow for tomorrow's stage. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Whoops, sorry about that.